this is the Minitab version of the tutorial video looking at uh, sampling and confidence intervals. And what we're going to look at in this tutorial is this very large data set we've got here of 25,000 observations, records of human heights and weights from Hong Kong. Now it says here that it's from a survey of 25,000 children from birth to 18 years. Um, so I'm not sure if that's accurate or if this data is actually of the mothers, not the children, because the average height is about 68 inches, um, which seems a little high for an average height for children. So that's about, oh, I forgot now, 170 something centimetres if you're a metric person. So it doesn't really matter too much because we're just interested in looking at the data, but I'd assume that this is going to be a, um, a sample of adults. Now, because we've got such a large data set here, we could almost consider this um, a census or a population data set. And therefore, if we get the mean height from 25,000 records, this is going to be very, very close to the true population height. So we can use this idea of actually knowing what the population value is to see how good our sampling is. So rather than look at all 25,000 records, uh, we're going to look at a few samples of a hundred observations. So what I've got in the data set, if you download it from the uh, from Blackboard, let me bring up Minitab, you'll see here that I've got height 1, weight 1, height 2, weight 2. And this is uh, as if I had taken, done 10 different observational studies or taken 10 different samples. And in each sample I've got, if you scroll down, You'll see I've got a hundred people, whether they're all adults or just females or just males, I'm not sure. So we've got a hun um, 10 different samples. Now if we, for your projects, you obviously won't be taking lots of different samples, you'll do, be doing one set of observations and so you would just have the first two columns. You'll just, if, for example, you were measuring heights and weights, you would have one lot of heights and one lot of weights. And it might not be 100, you might just have 40 people in your sample. And we can look at what happens when we have different size samples. So to start with, we can just take a look at the height and weight data just to get our head around what we're looking at. And I always advise you to do a few plots when you first start looking at data. So let's just do a simple scatter plot and we'll do um, height versus weight. I'm not too concerned about which order we do these in. Um, and you can see here that as people get taller, as they get the height goes up, the weight also goes up. So it does look like there's a correlation here between height and weight, which is probably what we would expect. It's not a perfect correlation. We've got some tall people that are very light and we've got um, We've got some people that are sort of medium height, but actually on the heavier end. And so there's a bit of variation around the height, which the weight, which is what, which is also what we would expect when measuring real people. So the question is now, how different are the results going to be each time we take a new sample from our population? Now, I have to remember not to cancel any more out because it's too loud. So, something we can look at is the mean for each of these values. You can see here I've already done a test run of calculating the, the means and confidence intervals. Um, we can go through the basic stats, display descriptive statistics, height, 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 height. And let's just say we're just looking at, take out all of these, we're just going to look at the mean. And you can see here that each time we get a new sample from our population, the mean is slightly different. And the question is how good is this estimate of the mean um, if we, for, the, for the whole population? How good is our sample estimate for the whole population? Now, because we've got a fairly good sample size here of 100 in each case, you'll see that even though there's some variation in our sample means, they are all clustered around this same value. So we would expect that the true population mean is somewhere around here. And in fact, it is about 68 inches. So if we go to graph, we can plot all of this. And what we would like is we don't actually want a plot of all the 
individual values. We really just want to look at the means and the confidence intervals around those means. So we're going to do an interval plot. Now because we don't just have one sample, which is normally the case, we would have one sample and then maybe we would split them into groups. We might look at height and weight and then split it into say males and females or children and adults or some other categorization. In this case, this is an unusual one where we actually have 10 different samples all together. So we're going to choose multiple Ys. And you can see here that I've put in four of them. But let's put the rest in. So height 5, height 6, height 7, height 8. Um, what am I up to? Height 9 and height 10. Now what we have here is the dot represents the sample mean and the error bars here, it tells us up the top here, this is a 95% confidence interval for the mean. So the 95% confidence interval tells us that 95% of the time our confidence interval will cover the true value of the mean. And you can see they're all a little bit different but they're all roughly covering the same patch of ground. And because we happen to know the true value of the mean in this case, um, because we have the whole data set of 25,000 records, we could plot that as what we call a reference line to compare the confidence intervals with. So to get a reference line in Minitab, if you just right click anywhere on the graph, it'll bring up a menu here and you can go down to add and we want to add in a reference line. So this is like a comparison line to compare all our data with. And you'd be interested in a reference line if you have some idea of a true value that you want to make a comparison with your sample. And in this case, the true value of the mean is 68 inches. I think it's 67.99 something or other, but we'll just use 68. Okay. So in this case, we happen to know the true value of the mean and we know that a 95% confidence interval around a sample will cover the true value of the mean 95% of the time. So if we, for a 95% confidence interval. So if we happen to have 100 samples, we took, we did the experiment or the survey 100 times and we calculated a 95% confidence interval for the mean on each one of those sample means then five of them would miss the true mean. Just due to random variation, five of them would not get it right. Now in this case, we, can, we know the true mean and we can plot them all and we can see that this one here is getting a little bit close, height number seven, it's only just managed to cover it, but we haven't got any that miss it completely. Now the difficulty is for in real life when you do statistics, you don't usually get 10 different samples, you don't usually get 100 samples, you usually just have your one experiment, maybe two. And so you hope that you've covered the true mean, but you actually can't guarantee it. And this is why we always have to put some measure of uncertainty about how sure are we that, that we have got the true value somewhere in our confidence interval. And for a 95% confidence interval, we can say that we're 95% sure that we have covered the true value, even though we don't know what the true value is. Now, if we want to know what the numbers for the confidence intervals are, we can get these out for using a different um, menu command. If we go up to stat and we're in basic statistics again and what we want to do is go down to one sample t which might not seem immediately obvious to you. You might expect to say confidence intervals but there's different ways of calculating it and we'll get on to testing later but so for the moment you might just have to write down that this is the item that you have to choose one sample t. I'll bring this across. Now the samples, we're actually going to look at, now we could just do this for one sample as the name suggests, um, but we're actually going to do it for 10 samples and the, the reason it's still called a one sample T is because we're not actually comparing these samples with each other, we're just calculating the mean and confidence interval for each one of these samples individually, but we can just do it uh, in a bulk lot altogether. So I'm up to height 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Okay. 
So now we have n is the number of observations, we've got 100 in each, we've got the mean, the standard deviation, the standard error of the mean, and the 95% confidence interval. And often this is what you would have to write in a paper. You would say um, a 95% confidence interval for the mean is from 67.78 to 68.5, and in this case that's inches in height. So from here we can just take a quick look at what happens if we don't have a really good sample. So if in this case we've got a hundred in each group, but let's take a look at what happens if we don't have quite so many. So if I come down to um, the groups 9 and 10, let's say we just had samples of size uh, 20 for both of those. And I'm just going to go through and I'm just actually going to delete the data as if it was never collected delete. So now we've actually got two samples which were much smaller. So I'm going to go back into graph and the interval plot and we're going to do the multiple y's again. Everything else is exactly the same. I've just changed the sample size. And you can see what's happened is, let's, have, let's add our reference line back in. Reference line Added at 68 inches. And let's bring up our other plot for comparison. Now you can see, oh, it's not letting me move it. <laughs> Here we go. I think it's because when I record at the same time, it just slows down the computer. Okay. Now we've got a much smaller sample for group 9 and group 10. And even though the the average height hasn't actually changed a whole lot for group 9, as you can see it is over here. Our confidence interval is now a lot wider and this means we are less sure of where the true mean lies. And it makes sense that if we have a smaller sample then we're not quite as sure that we've got the right result in the end. So if you have a smaller sample your confidence interval is going to be much wider because you have to account for the fact that you actually have less information now. Um, but note that the confidence interval is actually still covering the true mean. We've still covered the true mean somewhere in there, but if we didn't know what the true mean was, we really wouldn't know whether it was down here or up there, even though we, we happen to have still covered it in this case. Now for group 10, when we've changed the sample, you can see we've actually, our estimate of the mean has actually changed quite a lot. Instead of being above the mean, we're now below the mean. And again, the, um, the confidence interval I think is a bit wider, it's a little bit hard to tell. It's not a huge amount wider and that might just be because all these results are a lot more um, closer together, as in they're a lot more consistent around this 68.5 mark. So when you change your sample it will change the estimate of the mean and also change the confidence interval around that mean as well. Now the last thing we can look at is what happens if we change our level of confidence. So at the moment we're 95% confident, which means 95 times out of 100 we are pretty sure that we have got, we have covered the true value of the mean. 5% of the time we haven't covered it um, and we don't know exactly when that's going to happen but we just have to be aware that there's always a little bit of uncertainty uh, in calculating statistics. So the question might be is if we want to be 99% sure that we've got it, if we only are willing to have a mistake of one time in a hundred, so that 99 times out of a hundred we've got the right, we've covered the true value, um, what does this look like? Now Minitab's a little bit different from SPSS, so the commands are going to be different. If we go back to basic stats and the one sample T, I'll just drag that across, it's popped up on my other screen again and we go into options you can see that it does give us a here, uh, an option here to change our confidence level so we'll change that up to 99 okay okay and now we've got a 99 percent confidence interval however if we go to the interval plot Uh, now we can look through each of these um, 
and I went through this before and it doesn't actually seem to give us an option to change our level of confidence. So what you're going to have to do is I'll cancel out of that is go up in here into tools and options and we'll have to get to it through a, a different mechanism and we're going to go down to the individual graphs interval plots and we can see here that we can change our interval from standard error to confidence interval and we're just going to leave it at confidence interval but we can change the level up to 99 so this is a little bit um, unhelpful having to go through a separate menu item to do this so if we change that there okay and then we go into our graph interval plot multiple Y's okay we're going to do all of these again and actually it doesn't look like they have changed let's add our reference line back in at 68 they are just a little bit wider just to be a little bit more sure that we've got it. It's not completely easy to tell on this plot. Let's change this scale up to 69.5 and take that up to 70. One of the difficulties of comparing data can be when it's on actually different um, scales. If I can get these side by side. Now if you printed these out you'd be able to put them next to each other but hopefully now you can see that they're on the same scale both going from 67 to 70. That the 99% confidence interval is actually wider than the 95% confidence interval. It's gotten bigger and this is just to be extra sure that we've covered it because we now are not okay with making a mistake five times out of a hundred we're only willing to make a mistake one percent of the time or one out of a hundred times and so our confidence interval has to be larger to compensate now the opposite happens when you get a smaller confidence interval if you went down to an 80 percent confidence interval then they would all be narrower and we could go back and do that through the, the tools options but I won't just at the moment. Now I'm going to go back and reset my confidence interval to 95 because that's usually the default we work with. Um, where was it? Individual graphs, interval plots, 95. Okay.